This took place when I was about seven years old, my brother about ten. It was well past our bedtime when our mom woke up off the couch to put us to bed. Our dad worked construction out of town back then, so it was often just us three at the house for weeks at a time. Up the stairs and to the immediate right was our parents' bedroom. Going left puts you in the middle of a hallway. Taking another left down that hallway led to my brother's room. The opposite end was my room, which was also across the hall from our upstairs bathroom. At either end of the hallway are windowed doors we always kept locked and rarely used. The door on my end led to a balcony overlooking our front yard, and the door on my brother's end opened to our back porch. The house kind of leans into a small hill. My brother and mom both had a habit of waking up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom. I only knew this because I was always a light sleeper and they just couldn't help flushing with the door wide open. This night, however, my brother stopped on his way to his room and came back towards the bathroom. I'm going to try to pee before I go to bed. The past few nights I've been too afraid to walk to the bathroom. I keep seeing a man wearing stripes at the end of the hallway. I don't know if my mom wrote it off as my brother telling ghost stories to try to scare me or if she was already half asleep and didn't catch it, but she didn't react at all to my brother's confession. I, on the other hand, was terrified by it. The fear of seeing a ghost like that at the end of the hallway or through the windows is the reason I started running from the stairs to my bedroom at night. Years later, when I was about 18, my mom and I were having a conversation in her car about a dog we had for a very short time when I was little. We were sharing stories about Max's tendency towards destroying my shoes and other unruly behaviors when my mom blurted out, Do you remember that time I opened the front door for the cops and Max ran inside to the kitchen and started tearing open that big bag of dog food we had? This really caught me by surprise because in all the years I lived in that house, we never once called the cops. We were a gun-owning family in a quiet, rural West Virginia neighborhood. I asked her what she was talking about, and she looked equally surprised as if she had just revealed something by accident. Oh, that's right. I never told you because you were too young at the time. One night, I woke up hearing noises outside my window, and when I looked, I saw a man staring into my bedroom. She went on to describe how turning on the lights caused him to take off running and how she grabbed my dad's pistol before calling the cops. I can't remember all the details I gave them when they showed up. A tall white male wearing a striped shirt and jeans, short dark hair, something like that. They said it matched the description of a man they were looking for in the area. It turns out he had escaped from jail on a murder charge. Now, I know it sounds so obvious hearing those two stories back to back, but it wasn't until a few years ago, in my mid-twenties, that I pieced together that my brother had unknowingly warned us about a murderer who spent multiple nights casing our home. First of all, this is my first post, and I am from a Spanish-speaking country, so my English can be a little rough at times. So, about 12 years ago, I was 9 years old, and I was home alone with my 12-year-old brother. We were supposed to go to my aunt's house to have lunch and wait for my mother there. We always did that because we were too young to stay home alone, according to my mom. We got up at 10 in the morning, I took a shower, then my brother. After that, we were both in the bathroom brushing our teeth and finishing up, when we heard someone knocking on our door. Since every time someone knocked at our door, they turned out to be salesmen or Jehovah's Witnesses, we kind of waited for them to go away. After a couple of minutes, I went to see if they were still outside through the window, and no one was there. What a relief. We continued getting ready when we saw a shadow go by through the bathroom window, which was kind of like a small square made with that kind of glass that makes everything behind it really blurry. We waited and saw in case it was just a bird flying by when a hand hit it, clear as day. We got scared. We didn't know what to do. My brother had his cell phone, so he immediately called the police. While it was ringing, we heard a loud bang at the door. Someone was brute forcing it. I don't know if they were kicking it or ramming it, but it was one of the most frightening things I've ever heard. My brother told me to lock the bathroom door, so I did. It took five bangs so the perpetrator could finally bash open the door. Then the police answered. 
I remember the exact thing my brother said. He was whispering. His voice could barely be heard. Hello, there is someone in our house. I think they're stealing. Then a pause. We are at our address. Another pause. I'm with my little brother locked in our bathroom. Please hurry. While all that, I was sitting against the wall, hugging my knees. It was one of the most nerve-wracking experiences ever. I could hear the man going through all of our stuff, emptying stands, going up and down the stairs, opening cabinets. He even broke a few cups and plates. Then I heard the sound my cell phone does when it turns off, and I remembered leaving it on the kitchen table. I felt so stupid for leaving it there. Things continued for a couple of minutes when we heard him trying to open the door to the bathroom. My brother got a hold of a big metal rod we had lying around there. He started kicking the door. Who is there? The man screamed. We said nothing. Another kick. Then another. I felt I was about to have an anxiety attack. My chest started to ache. I had chills and was really hot. I tried to remain calm, but it was just too much. After that, he stopped. We heard the door opening, and then silence. We waited for almost ten minutes before going out of the bathroom. The living was a total mess, lots of papers and books on the floor. The cabinets were open, cups and plates on the floor. In our mother's bedroom, the nightstand and the closet were open, and everything inside them was all over the place. Upstairs, in our room, it was the same thing. In about five minutes, the man was able to go through everything we had and left a total mess. After that, my brother called my mom and she ordered us to go to my aunt's as soon as possible, so we did. When we got there, I was a little more relaxed. My aunt was waiting for us with ice cream, probably because my mom told her everything and she wanted to calm us down a bit. We went back home at about five in the evening. My mom told her boss she had a home emergency, so she left early. She tidied up the house, cleaned up, and left everything the way it was before so we could be relaxed. I really appreciate her effort and my aunts to calm us down and do everything so we didn't have to think about it. According to my mom, the police got home after she arrived, at three in the afternoon, four hours after the incident. She explained everything, but because of lack of evidence, nothing could be done. The man was never caught, and honestly, I don't think they even tried to search for him. The next day, my mom was home with us. Now I tell the story as a funny anecdote. Luckily, no one was hurt, and he only took useless stuff. But at the time, I was really scared. To a nine-year-old, an experience like that can have serious repercussions. I'm lucky it never came to that, and I got over that after a couple of weeks. So yeah, that is my story. Let's never meet again. It all started over a year ago, living in my current small neighborhood. It was unusually hot in our house for October, and my sister figured it'd be a good idea to keep her window open for a bit of air. She was doing her homework and I was getting ready for bed when suddenly she burst into my room. She frantically says that she heard some noises outside, sounds of leaves crunching under a person's steps. I believed it to be an animal. So I walked into her room and stayed there for no more than five minutes until I heard leaves crunching. We quickly glance out the window only to hear the sound of something running away in the woods, but that wouldn't be the end of the story. During the winter, I enjoy exploring the woods towards the back of my house, climbing trees and traveling further back to the fields. I remember the events very clearly. It had just snowed that night, the first snowfall of winter, and I was more than excited to head out there. I did so and climbed my usual tree to look out. I gave a cursory glance around me and at the ground when I noticed something strange, footsteps leading away from my house. This wouldn't be weird as long as the front of the footsteps didn't end pointing straight at my house and the origin of them came from a seemingly long off start. I tracked them down up to a point where there was a rusty wire fence covered in snow where they disappeared. October 2017 it started up again. I was laying in my bed pitch dark, not a light shining through my room when I heard it, my doorknob turning and my door creaking open. My heart stopped. Every single possibility of what it was was rushing through my mind. Keep in mind my door is always shut when I go to sleep. 
Since I was covered by my blanket, I quickly shot my sister a text. Did you just come in my room? She replied with a sharp, no, I'm all the way in Hilliard. My heart began pumping fast. I slowly snuck my hand under my pillow and grabbed my baton, sent a text to my dad, and waited. My dad came in mere minutes later with a knife, shot on the lights, and I jumped out of bed. Searched the entire house with nothing, alarm set, and all doors locked. Impossible. There's no way that happened otherwise. My dad and mom were asleep, and a cat would have opened it much faster if it jumped at the doorknob. You best believe I didn't sleep a second that night. Fast forward to December. My relatives in town are staying for a week in the basement. We turned on the alarm and all headed to sleep. I stayed up gaming. In the morning around three, my uncle slowly opened his eyes, with a feeling of being watched. His eyes adjusted a bit to the dark before he saw it, a guy, average height, scrawny, hair flowing in the wind and shivering looking inside their room through the window. My uncle screamed and they grabbed the baby before taking off upstairs. That morning, I was informed what happened. I looked for footprints and saw only the smallest sign of a footprint, a front toe print made by what I could only assume was a sneaker. My uncle gave me more details without me telling him I looked for footprints, and he said the guy was leaning to the left looking in. The footprint matched his story. The left had a thin line of dirt anyone could have shimmied across. Now that leads to tonight, the night I could swear he or whatever it was had been in our house. I couldn't sleep. Life has been stressful lately and I was up pretty much all night until I tried getting rest. Every night I've had string Christmas lights dimly light the room until tonight. I figured the lights must have been interfering with my sleep, so I unplugged them and headed off to sleep. Pillow over my head, I started to drift off until it happened. A quick strum of my guitar and the sound of something falling over with a desperate attempt to stop it from hitting the ground filled the room. This sound ignited my heart rate. Saliva developing at an extreme speed made it hard to not swallow. I could feel the presence of someone in my room. Realizing I left my baton on my desk, I did the next logical thing. Pretend I was asleep. I tried and laid there for what felt like hours when in reality it was only a few minutes until I heard a whimper come from my sister's room. Imagining this may be the day everyone in my family was silently murdered, but I gathered all the courage I had. I grabbed my phone, turned on the flashlight, and grabbed my baton. I busted into my sister's room and screamed, hey, only to see they were unharmed. My sister asked what the hell I was doing and I just stood there looked into the pitch black of my room and cried. I have never in my life felt the overwhelming emotion of believing my family was going to be taken from me until today. I sit here in my chair writing this in hopes to document my experiences and try to come to some logical conclusion. All I can come up with is that there is some guy stalking my family and perhaps sneaking into our rooms at night. 